In today's episode of Secrets of the Support Fold, we'll be talking about two subjects. The first subject is rotating pages in PDFs. And the second subject will be adding content, placing content. So let's start about rotating pages. The big thing in the rotating pages um, fix-ups is how to identify the pages you want to rotate. You can rotate all the pages or you can use a check that hits on a certain page of a certain number of pages and rotate just those pages. And that is where the what we're going to talk about today, where the strength is in the apply to check. The apply to is available in most of the uh, actions fix ups in uh, PDF toolbox. So we can go straight to a demonstration. There's not much to show in a presentation here. Okay, so in PDF Toolbox, the first place you'll find the rotate pages is in the switchboard underneath pages, you have rotate. The rotate action here is actually just the, rot uh, the rotate pages fix up that with uh, two variables, rotate how many degrees, 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, or 180. And the apply here. The apply you see here does the same thing as the apply in the fix up will do. It will use a certain check always or if both of landscape even or odd pages to identify the pages that you want to rotate so these uh, these four are just basically checks that hit on those types of pages so if i open a multi-page document here i can just use this and it will work as you would expect let's pick uh, the odd pages execute you can see page one is quoted, page two it's not. So it would work exactly as you would expect. Now, of course, let's go on to the fix ups. You can see there are some profiles already present in the Prepress Color and Transparency library. And these are the same uh, profiles, the, the same fix ups we talked about just now in the switchboards so you have 180 degrees 90 degrees clockwise counterclockwise if portrait or if landscape so these will basically do the same things that uh, you'll find in the switchboard function now if we look at for example the rotated pages to landscape if portrait in the edit view you'll see it uses the apply to functionality on if portrait this if portrait here is basically a check. So if we want to do our own thing with that, I'll just, yeah, just go out there first. You can see I made a few myself in the support library. I made in a check called first page to apply to the first page only. We can look at this check. Uh, I made this myself, so it just says first page. Then we have the check here called sequential page number equal to number one. So if you only want to uh, make the second page go, you would just change this to two and rotate the second page. Now you could also say as contained within or uh, some multiple of, you can use different things. If you want to rotate all the pages in between uh, five and 15, you could choose as contained in and then say five to 15. There are way more um, checks available in the pages category that you can use to identify the pages you want to rotate. So you could um, base it on a certain piece of content. You could base it on the colors, I suppose. Uh, and here you also see the if, if landscape is portrait is rotated. You could use is rotated to um, rotate it back to its original position. That's also an interesting one to use. Then only pages that have been rotated from their original position will be, will be rotated back to what they originally were. So 
so that's mostly what the rotate pages will do. We also have the even and the odd page here that is also used in the ones that already exist. You can use the last page and the first page. We already saw the first page. So you can base your check on a lot of different properties. And you can always rotate by 90 degrees. So um, I could use this. Yes, that's okay. I could use this fix up to just rotate. It'll ask me to save. And this will rotate the first page 180 degrees, but leave all the others untouched. Now, as I said, the apply to is not only available in the rotate pages, but actually in most um, fix ups. So if we go out of here, we could uh, go to this one, for example, and you will also see the apply to here. So you'll find it in most fix ups where it is logical uh, to be able to choose a certain uh, identifier for the pages you want to use a fix up to. And you can base it on any check you can make here. So it's just a normal check. That is mostly it for rotating pages. If you have any questions about that, you can just type them in the chat or questions windows in GoToWebinar. Okay, I have a question. Um, this, uh, this list of checks that you have in there, that's the list of checks that are in your current library, right? Yes, <laughs> there are those checks. <laughs> okay, because that's a, that's a common thing that uh, that we get as question as well is why certain checks don't show up and uh, unfortunately when you're in the wrong library when you make this you will only see the checks that show up in that in that library so it's one of the things that you want to keep uh, an eye on is to make sure that while you create this your your check actually lives in the same library as the fix up that you're uh, that you're about to make okay uh, no questions from the audience? Okay, so um, let's move on back to the presentation then and go to the second part of this webinar. This will be a little more expensive than this first bit. Okay, so adding content, the place content uh, fix up. What content can we place? You can of course use place content using HTML templates that you can, that you can write yourself and you can place any kind of content using those. Um, that requires a little bit more of an effort, but it results in more definable uh, place content fix ups. We will not be discussing the HTML templates uh, during this webinar. Uh, there are definitely uh, pages on the help.colasoftware.com website where you can find more information about those as well. And there are templates available where you can basically have a look and maybe copy them. I will show you that uh, folder as well. So what file formats can we use other than using the HTML templates? We can use PDFs. The good thing about using PDFs is that the content remains the same that it was when you made the PDF. So if you have um, vector images or vector lines in your uh, place in your PDF, they will stay vector. And if you have um, spot colors in there, they will stay spot colors. So nothing gets rust red. It doesn't just become a little image or something. It stays the same content it was in the PDF. And we can place a lot of different image file formats, PNG, JPEG, TIFF, SVG, EPS, PostScript, and these all work fine. Then the second important thing about the place content is that the, your PDF where you are placing the content onto, so the original PDF, 
the coordinates within the PDF are with the origin on the bottom left. So the y-axis plus is going upwards, while in an HTML um, page, it would, in HTML format, it would be going downwards. So the content of an HTML page is at the top left. So this is important because uh, you will have to identify where you want to place your content or how much space you want to leave uh, from the bottom or from the side. And you will be using these coordinates for that. So if you, if you want your PDF or image to go up when placing comments, uh, co content, you will use Y plus and not Y minus. Okay, let's move on to the PDF toolbox and let's have a look at this part as well. Um, I'll use a different sample file for this. I'll use a, a boring one. Okay, so we have this uh, test file and we can move to place content. Fix ups is probably a better idea. And we can search in all the libraries. Once again, you see that there are a lot of, uh, well, of course, you will find place content in the place content library. It's actually in the, in the title. And you will find a few default ones available again. So, uh, for example, you have this place page number in right corner um, fix up. If I use that here, that's probably not the best file to use that on. I'll move back to the eight pages one because of the black shape in the corner. So, if I use this and I use fix, we'll have to save it again. Process. You will see a page number is added to the right bottom. This is also uh, using just the place content fix up. So if we go to edit, we will see it uses place. Okay, it doesn't use place content. Uh, but it does the same thing, it adds content to the page. Then This is another uh, example using an image file. I call it place penguin. You can see I add a nice little penguin to every page, hiding that page number. Now this one I am certain uses the place content on page. You can see there is also place barcode, page number and text. We just saw page number. All of these are basically page uh, place content. Uh, you can see this is where my penguin is kept. So where, if you want to place content, you should uh, keep your content on a certain place for it to be found in here. You can see I also have my crop mark and my color bar. You can open that folder using this button. So now I open that folder, I'll just get it in here. Okay, so it's called HTML template, uh, but you can also just, you can see this one, it uses an index of HTML file, fonts, scripts, and styles to define the content, but you can also just add uh, this penguin that I just added to the page as an image file. If you just put the, uh, make a folder and add the penguin in there, it will create a colors PDF toolbox will create a temp folder making this index.pdf and it will use this file uh, to add it to the content. Now I said you can add uh, PNG files, you can add image files. You can also add PDF files. So I have a color bar in here. This is the same thing. So let's go uh, to the color bar and let's look at the options a bit more closer here. So we have this color bar it's my, this is not the one I wanted to use. Let's use this one. So you have the color bar that is defined in the, in the folder that I just showed you. You have the horizontal and the vertical offset. And this is where I said was important to know uh, in what direction you're moving the content. I put minus eight because I'm basing it on uh, a box and I want to move it out of the box. So 
I put minus 8. Then you have the units you want to use for the offset and you can choose where on the box you are uh, aiming at. So I'm using, as a reference point, I'm using the lower left corner of my bleed box in this uh, fix up. You can also rotate your content, which can be interested in certain cases. I will come back to that in a minute. And you can create your content on a layer. So if I say this fix up is fine, I'll use this page and I'll place that CMYK color bar unprocessed. There we go. Now I based my origin on here. So when I set minus eight, I am moving the thing eight millimeters downwards onto here instead of keeping it on top of the image. So I moved it outside of the trim box. You can see the PDF color bar is added perfectly. Now, if I, uh, to prove that this keeps everything that it had as it, uh, when it was a PDF, I can go to the object inspector and I can go, for example, to this field and you can see this field is in fact CMYK based and it is 0.8 CMYK, so 0.8 magenta. While uh, when you would be using an image or when, the image, uh, when this PDF would become a rasterized image, it would be uh, an RGB color and instead of a CMYK color. So if you have content you want to place that has spot colors, it will also remain in the spot colors. So you can see that is uh, in fact the case here. Now, um, I have another test file that I would like to show. And that is... no longer where I thought it was. Give me just a second here to find it. Okay, I got it. There we go. So we have this uh, this file. And I created a trim box area. So this is where the trim box is. You can see I actually um, set my preferences not to show the trim box, and I did that uh, specifically for. Um, I, this is the function for that, by the way. You can use that yourself as well if you want. If you want to visualize space geometry boxes, you can find that function here, and you can also show the names. But if I use that, it actually goes right on top of the trim box line that I had on this file. And I wanted to make the result more visible. So I turned this off for now. So you can see I have the trim box and it is in fact the trim box. Now I made this fix up called place crop marks. And if we have a look at what that crop mark actually is, that is, I'll just go out of it because it's a PDF file. I can open that here. So this is just a square PDF file, one by one centimeter in size, that has this black line that is two points width. Normally I wouldn't make it that big, but it's quite visible that way. And I just use this one PDF file, crop mark uh, two point point PDF, to create all four crop marks. So we see this is the crop mark where I put it in the, in the folder I showed earlier. I don't use any offsets. I base it on the page corner. So this is the crop mark on the upper left corner of the trim box. And I wrote it at 180 degrees because you saw on my PDF that the line was here and I want to have it here on my file. So you can see I put it on a different layer called crop marks in this case, and I place it on top of the original layer. I apply it to all pages. So we also have the apply to functionality here if you want to apply certain contents to identified pages. Now you see I added it not one, I added it four times. So this one is the upper right corner, 90 degrees rotated. Also, no offsets necessary. You have the third one on the lower right corner and the fourth one on the lower left corner. And all of these are in the same place cop marks fix up. 
So if I use this fix up on this file and I put it back where I was working before, you can see I added the same one by one centimeter crop mark on all four corners of the document exactly where I expect it to be with the correct rotation. And you can see quite uh, clearly that they are there. So that is um, a little more advanced use of the place contents when using just one simple uh, PDF file and I can just put it four times in a different rotation. It's a little bit more advanced. But you can see there are a lot of different things you can do. You can place a QR code, place the dates. Uh, there are already several things present in the software itself. And if you want to make your own uh, content, it is as easy as just making your own PDF or getting your own image file and then creating a fix up. So we can just uh, do that too. Create fix up, use place content on page, I give it a name. So I could make, for example, place wizard penguin. Then we have to add a folder here. Instead of penguin, I will create a folder wizard penguin. I will have to add my wizard penguin to that folder. So that's an image file and it's quite a big image too, so it will be definitely visible. Okay, so if we go, we have to cancel this because it has to refresh. Place content on page and now we will see the wizard penguin folder is in fact available in this Dropbox. Let's just put it in the center of the page without any offsets. And the box in this case doesn't really matter. And we will not rot rotate it, but you could uh, rotate it anything you want. Then, okay. And now if we just use this place wizard penguin on this file, you will be covering the currently place penguin with a wizard penguin. So that's how easy a place content uh, fix up can be. And as we said in the beginning, if you want to make something really complicated, like you want to make uh, a proof page, you can do that with an HTML template and you can go all the way in there, making it more complicated and making it uh, more detailed. Any more questions that haven't already been answered about this? No? Okay. David, do you want to uh, add something? No? Then I think we went through both of our points. I can go back to the presentation to let you guys see the nice last page. Uh, this page contains my details. My name is Michiel. Uh, you can see my email address at the bottom. If you have any questions about anything PDF Toolbox related, you can also mail it to support at 4 or support at colossoftware.com and they will appear in our inbox. Uh, sending to support will enable everything, everyone from support to see the question and might get you an answer more quickly but feel free to email me as well at michiel at uh, Thank you for attending this webinar. I hope you learned something and that uh, everything is a little bit more clear than it was before. And we would like to see you again at the next webinar uh, to which you will undoubtedly be invited. Have a great day.